Hello, welcome to F1 Chat on Technically Analytics. Now, I was on vacation for a month, so I missed two Grand Prix, but we're going to just uh, skip over that. And we're here for the Miami Grand Prix, and I'm glad I came back at the right time because I had a McLaren victory, which we'll get to at the end. So we're going to start off with the worst team, which is Kick Sauber Team F1. We have Zhao, P14, Botas, P16. Botas looked uh, better in recent races, but the results haven't been there. Their pit stops are still pretty slow. So, you know, it's it's it looks troubling for, for Botas. He, he's improving a little bit, but not enough. And the results are still awful. And then as for Zhao, P6, or P14, uh the riding's on the wall for him he had a nice race in china a nice sprint in china and then the race is kind of bad but overall i think when nico hulkenberg signed for next season i think he's the driver out and who knows about botas he might be out too uh we'll just have to see it hasn't not the haven't said who's who's gonna who hulkenberg's replacing or anything yet so we'll see but it's not looking good kick has been kind of bad this season and they have no points on the season so far and we're going to move on to Williams, Albon, P18, Sergeant, DNF. So Sergeant had a crash with K-Mag and it wasn't his fault, uh, but he definitely didn't need it to happen because he was he's trying to keep his seat. There's been rumors swirling that he's going to he's going to get replaced after Imola or after this race. So, I mean, anything can happen, but yeah, it's tough. And then for Albon, another tough race. Uh, I think he had contact at some point and it kind of ruined his race. He had to, or he had like a lockup and he, his tire got flat spotted. So he had to change it out at the end. And that's, that's tough. But I'm still had a tough year. I thought they were going to be a little bit better than they were last year, but they've actually gotten worse, which is pretty interesting. So moving on to Alpine, Ocon P10, one point, Gasly P12. Ocon gets Alpine's first point in the season, which is really good. I mean... It's a step in the right direction. Maybe the car, I think their car is now back to where it's supposed to be on weight wise, but they just need to get it fast now. And Gasly is reportedly looking to leave for Williams, which kind of says everything. When Williams looks like the better option than the team you're currently on, that's where you know you he, he clearly, he doesn't, he's not happy there, obviously, being last. And he has, Gasly's had an awful season. And Ocon, I mean, one point, that's, you know. It's a constellation, but it's something. And moving on to Haas, K-Mag, P19, Hulkenberg, P11. Uh, K-Mag had an extraordinary five penalty points this weekend between the sprint penalty points and his bad drive and his his driving tactics. He was the ultimate team player. Uh, I wonder if they're going to keep him around, actually, for that reason, for the team aspect of it, or if they're going to be like, dude, you're just not fast like Hulkenberg and, you know, I don't know. I, I'm curious to see what happens. Also, F1 probably should limit those kind of tactics because it's it's a little dirty, right? Like, I understand it's within the rules. You're allowed to, you know, if you cut the chicane once, it's like, all right, this is what you get away with it. But you shouldn't be able to do it more than once. Like, that's kind of against the rules, though, right? Like, it should be a stiffer penalty, I think. I don't know how they're going to police it in the future if they even do, but I think they should probably tone that down a little bit. And then Hulkenberg got, nearly got points again. k was too far back to help him. So P11, not bad, but Hulkenberg has looked pretty good this season. And it got him a contract with uh, Kick Sauber for 2025. So good for him. Uh, V-Carb Racing Bulls. Ricardo P15, Sonoda P7, six points. Ricardo really cooked in the sprint. Uh, but the penalty from last race ruined his chances in the race. Like he was just, he was never in it. He was, he's out of like P19. It just was never, he was never in the race. The sprint looked really good though. It was like old Ricardo, P4, five points. You know, that's, that's a good result for him. And Yuki has been one of the most consistent drivers on the grid. I mean, he's been consistently right in between 11 and seven the whole season. And that's, that's good. That's, he's been, he's been developing to a good driver. I think. Red Bulls should consider him for uh, for that second Red Bull seat. He's been really good if if they move on from Perez. I mean, Perez hasn't fallen apart yet, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. So Aston Martin had a tough race. Alonso P9, two points. Stroll P17. 
Alonso struggled for points or struggled for pace, but his experience got him the points. I think we could chalk that up to just him being very experienced and knowing how to drive the car to the best of his ability, best of its ability and his ability. So that's why he was in the points. And then Stroll showed us that Aston Martin really not getting that fast, not not getting faster. The, their cars in the wrong driver's hands, their car is pretty bad. So yeah, it's kind of a tough race for Aston Martin. I don't think they ever really got, they never really had the best qualifying either. So yeah, I guess you could, you could have seen it coming. And then Mercedes, Hamilton, P6, eight points. Russell, P8, four points. Uh, Hamilton really found something late in the race and he looked pretty good. Also, it was his best result of the season, P6. He hadn't had a finish above P6 yet. And then Russell had a very average race. He wasn't brilliant, but he wasn't bad. He scored four points. And it's clear that Mercedes is struggling to keep up with McLaren, who's in third, they're in fourth. So yeah, but at least the good news for Mercedes is that Aston Martin is going nowhere either. So they're kind of just like in limbo and no man's land there, four and five, just kind of like they get in the points, but it's not really like top scoring points. So yeah, a little bit tough. And then Ferrari, we have Science P5, 10 points, Leclerc P3, 15 points. Science had a good race, but he was hurt by strategy decisions. Like their pit stops were a little weird, even though the pit stops were fast. They had the fast pits or Leclerc had the fast pits off 1.9 seconds, but overall they just pitted at the wrong time and that kind of ruined the race. And Leclerc didn't have the pace to just keep up with Verstappen and Norris, but tough strategy call at the beginning. The first safety car coming to the pit before the safety car really kind of ruined him his chances because if he had pitted during it, he would have saved enough time to possibly be in second, maybe even get past Verstappen. So, so manage a podium. So overall, it was a good race. Ferrari stays in the hunt for Red Bull and they're bringing updates uh, next race in Imola and we'll see how those go. And if those go well, then who knows? They might be on pace with Red Bull and McLaren. So, <clears throat> well, they're definitely already on pace with McLaren, but at least for, for on pace with Red Bull, they have a chance. Maybe one of the best chances, in fact. And for Red Bull, Perez, P4, 12 points. Verstappen, P2, 18 points. Or, sorry, Perez, P4, 12 points. And Verstappen, P2, 18 points, yeah. Uh, so, Verstappen acquired four damage early in the race. It came out after, and it slowed him down just enough so he couldn't catch up to Norris, and he couldn't fly away and get a huge lead. Uh, so, yeah, it's surprising that Verstappen got beat, but when you hear about the damage, you're like, oh, that's why. And then for Perez, keeps his good driving streak alive. Interested to see the next few races because after around Monaco is when he started to fall apart. Perez, he has really good form in the beginning and then he started falling apart. Like the next five races, he was awful in qualifying and his awful driving continued into the race. So we'll see if he can keep his foot on the gas and keep getting these good point hauls and stuff. I don't think Red Bull replaces him necessarily in the middle of the season. They'll probably wait till the end. But we'll see if he does enough. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to do enough, but we'll see. <clears throat> and then McLaren, race winners, Piastri P13, Norris P1, 25 points. Let's go. So Piastri's race started out really good. He had that great pass on the first lap to take third, and then he took second and even first for a while. The contact with Science late in the race during his chances for a big McLaren points haul. Overall, Piastri showed that the car was really fast and the updates were working. And then, of course, Norris gets his first win of his F1 career after 110 starts. Uh, another McLaren race winner. Honestly, it was one of the most emotional first wins I've seen. Almost every opposing driver came to congratulate him afterwards. And like I said, McLaren brought upgrades and it seems to have, have worked nonetheless because it's a good points haul. I mean, even though maybe they weren't like the safety car, you could have said helped them, but... <clears throat> The answer, but even Verstappen said without the safety car, Norris had the pace to win. So I'm really happy with his with McLaren's results. I think Piastri got his race ruined by science, but you know it, it happens. It's racing. So yeah, so that's the Miami Grand Prix. Uh, the next one is gonna be Imola in <coughs> in a week. So I'll be back with another video then. Thanks for watching F1 Chat.